Our Computex 2019 coverage is made possible thanks to Corsair, Patriot, EK, Titra, and Viper Gaming. Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and we're here with Azus at the ROG booth. Obviously, as we know, the other day AMD unveiled the new third generation uh, Ryzen processors and more importantly, the X570E chipset. So Azus have obviously taken note of that and we have six different motherboards here featuring that wonderful X570 chipset. So just going through the stack, to start with, we've got the X570E Gaming. Uh, we have also got the F Gaming as well. Very, very similar in specs as we've seen on other platforms such as Z390. But X570E Gaming, as we know, AM4 socket. It has got a fan. All of these uh, actually have a fan over the chipset. Uh, but some of the main features of this is obviously we have got two M.2 slots. So with that, we have got access, thanks to the X570 chipset, we have access to uh, PCI Express Gen 4. So uh, on this, obviously, we have got plenty of expansion slots on there for multi-GPU setups, and it has got Wi-Fi built into it as well. And it is actually Wi-Fi 6 AX200, so slightly improved speeds on that. Moving over to the X570 F Gaming, you can see it does look very, very similar to the E Gaming. Uh, DDR4, 64 gig support, obviously AM4 socket, X570 chipset, all the usual stuff, uh, but on this one, no Wi-Fi. As we move up at the stack, kind of probably my favorite because I do like a Mini ITX build, we've got the X570i Gaming. So Mini ITX in terms of form factor, but still it doesn't compromise on some of the features that we're actually getting with it. So we still have a Wi-Fi 6 AX200. It has gigabit ethernet. It has the ROG Supreme FX 8 channel audio codec. So you're really getting you know, a whole host of features on it. Yes, it only has two DIMM slots, but that's kind of what we'd expect on an ITX board. In terms of RGB on this board, Typically, as you'd see on an ITX board, we have got these RGB lights down the side, which once it's inside a chassis will kind of bounce off, as you can see, like we've got here. Now, even though this one does look like a kind of ITX board, it's actually DTX form factor. So this is the Crosshair 8 Impact. So uh, in terms of obviously fan and cooling, we actually have it over the shroud here. Uh, and we've got the uh, ROG logo here. But a few added extras this one's got is this little card here, specifically for your M.2 drive. So again, PCI Express 4.0, thanks to the X570 chipset. Uh, and I believe it's actually one M.2 card here and one on the other side. Two DIMM slots we do have, you know, for hardcore overclockers and things like that. You know, some start buttons and all your power over on one side, just to kind of clean up the general aesthetics and looks of it just that little bit. As I say, it is a DTX form factor, so it has this slightly sort of larger bit at the bottom, which is where the Supreme FX audio is, with a few little uh, buttons down there, again, for those overclockers. Being an impact board, it is kind of aimed at, you know, being able to tweak it on the go. Moving up to almost the top end, we have the... Uh, Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi, probably one of my favorite boards because as we know, the Hero kind of gives you a good balance of performance, features, and obviously pricing. So with this, again, we do have the uh, the fan cooling down the PCH on the chipset. We've got this very large shroud at the top with the Hero branding and sort of, you know, RGB effect. Supreme FX Audio, once again, we've got three X16 slots on here, uh, four uh, DDR4 slots supporting up to 64 gig uh, of memory, no word on what speeds it should be supporting. Obviously, we will find out more information based on that and the processors and what they're actually able to do with the memory controller. But yeah, four DIMM slots on there. Uh, we have a single, uh, sorry, an eight pin and a four pin. Plenty of fan headers around the board. Lots and lots of uh, you know addressable headers and RGB headers on here. Your uh, your general sort of buttons and things for overclocking, slow mode, everything that you'd kind of expect on a Hero motherboard. Uh, on this, you do obviously have Wi-Fi being branded as a Hero Wi-Fi. Because they branded it in such a way, I'm guessing they will have a non-Wi-Fi version, which probably retail for about 15 or 20 pounds, 15 or 20 dollars cheaper when this does come to market. And then we move up to the top end at the moment. I'm maybe expecting an extreme board to come out at a later date, but for now, we've got the Crosshair 8 formula. So again, AM4 socket, X570, everything that you know, uh, plenty of RGB across here, uh, across here and down here as well. We obviously do have uh, the collaboration with EK to call the VRMs. In terms of the VRMs, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, it looks like a 16 phase VRM design. So plenty of clean, stable power for overclocking. Obviously we don't have any kind of true word on overclocking on the third generation processors 
just yet, but you know that when we get uh, sort of you know reviews for this, um, then you know we will be sort of pushing it and seeing what we can actually get out of this particular board. Other than that, we have three X16 slots, so I'm guessing two of them are going to be operating at uh, X8 speeds by the looks of it. And uh, yeah, we will be getting some sort of you know really nice uh, performance from a board like this. Plenty of SATA ports, plenty of connectivity, eight pin and a four pin to give you that clean, stable power. Your start and reset buttons like you'd expect. Plenty of addressable headers, plenty of buttons for overclocking, and again, Supreme FX audio. The ATX form factor, ATX form factor, ITX. DTX and then again down with the ATX. So yes we only have six boards on the X570 chipset at least when it comes to ROG but I'm probably expecting a few more at a later date. I'm kind of hoping that we see a Crosshair 8 Extreme as well as an M80X board because well it doesn't seem like anyone's actually got a micro ATX board from any brand featuring the X570 chipset. Maybe Azus can be the first. What board out of these do you guys prefer? Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments section below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the rest of our Computex coverage in Taipei, Taiwan, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.